I'm just shooting this quick video just to answer some questions I've had in about types of keyboards to buy, what stands to get, what chairs to have, and uh, questions for senior citizens and people with physical challenges uh, and people within wheelchairs. So um, I'll try and cover as much as I can in a short video. So the first two fundamental things um, to, to look at is the type of keyboard. So if you're looking to buy a keyboard, there's two types. Now, uh, what I'm looking at is electronic pianos. So I'm not looking at the um, types of keyboards that have lots of rhythms and different types of sounds. Uh, they're great for certain people. I personally prefer just the piano sound and the simplicity of this type of look so it doesn't have all the buttons on um, and all the fancy stuff. It looks more like a like a piano and it's a nicer piece of furniture, I think. So uh, the Yamaha range is my overall preferred one. Uh, I like Roland as well, and but, uh, but Yamaha, the Piagero, this is the NP11, um, which is a slightly older version of, this is the NP12, it looks almost the same. Um, so the NP12 is the current one that they're making, which is the sort of lowest cost entry level keyboard, uh, which I think is really good. So it's a, just over £200, roughly, uh, for the keyboard. It's got good piano sounds and it's light and portable. It's a non-weighted keyboard, so um, it's lightweight plastic with a, just a light kind of spring, which um, I like that. It's, uh, it's really nice. So again, if you have any issues with physically pushing down the keys, um, there's less strength is needed for this style of keyboard. So um, the two fundamental things here are the range of keys. So uh, the standard, the NP12 has got 61 keys, which is the pretty standard amount of keys for a, you know, for a small keyboard. And that's plenty for people when they're learning up to intermediate stage. Um, you can go for a 76 key keyboard. So uh, these ones here, these, they are ones in the Piagero range that have 72 keys. Um, again, the, the NP32 is the one up from the NP12 with the larger amount of keys. Uh, it might cost about another 100 pounds roughly. Um, so if you have space for it and you have the extra budget, then probably going for the NP32 would be uh, the one to do, unless then you want to move up to a weighted keyboard. Now, a weighted keyboard is more similar to a real piano feel. Um, they normally cost about twice the price of a non-weighted keyboard. And of course, it needs more physical action to push the key down. So this here, this is a, um, is a weighted keyboard. Uh, this actual one is a Roland FP30. Um, pretty similar to the Yamaha P125. They're both pretty similar, similar price points. They're about roughly 500 to 600 pounds. Um, so they're kind of double the NP32 level. Um, these are normally 88 keys um, and they are less portable, so they're much heavier. Uh, and it's just whether you prefer the, the feel of that or not. But again, if you have any issues with your dexterity of fingers, then the non-weighted weighted keyboard might be better for you. So that's keyboards. Um, I'll put some links below to the you know the actual ones and some places that you, you can buy them but normally if you just google those brands you'll find people selling them um, now the next thing is the stand what stand to go for so the cheapest option is the x like a cross stand which is like like this here so it's uh, adjustable on height um, you can raise it or 
or lower it. They're, they tend to shake a little bit. So when you, you know, if you are, if you're filming anything, certainly, uh, I don't use these when I'm filming because as you're playing it, it, it sort of shakes a little bit back and forth. Um, if you're just using it for yourself at home, that's not such of a problem. These can cost 20 pounds, 25 pounds, something like that. Um, the other option is to go for a fixed stand, which is built for the actual model of keyboard that you buy. So for example, on, on this one here, uh, the main reason I bought this was to get the fixed stand so that when I'm filming, I've got an overhead camera here. So when I'm filming, it doesn't wobble around. Um, so of course you're paying more money for this. So the, the stand is probably a hundred pounds roughly. Uh, the keyboard, you know, could be 550 or something like that. So, you know, it's more money, but uh, it's a nicer piece of furniture. Um, this obviously would be easier for a wheelchair user because it doesn't have the cross in the middle, so the space here, so it's easier to get a, a chair or a wheelchair under, assuming that the height is okay. So the downside with these is it's not height adjustable. It's, it's a fixed height there. So um, it would be worth checking if that height suits you. If not, one other option would be just to get a kind of table which which uh, goes up and across like that that is the right height and just place the keyboard on that. Um, a third thing then is the type of seat that you want to use. So there's options like the standard piano type of seat. Again, I bought this with the keyboard um, and it was probably about 80 pounds or something. And I can adjust the height here with the, uh, this goes up and down. Um, so there's that type or obviously there's any type of other chair. There's, I've got this kind of office chair here, which I use um, as well. So that's on casters and it's got a back rest there. So um, yeah, obviously being comfortable at the keyboard is very important. So uh, there's lots of choice in different types of seating and chairs. Um, the next thing is a pedal. So if you have full use of your foot, it's normally your right foot, but I suppose either foot would do, then uh, having a pedal really improves the sound of your playing. So uh, the cheapest way is one of these types of pedals, which is just a, it's just a standalone sustain pedal. And these can be about 30 pounds roughly and they just plug into the keyboard and they hold the note um, as you're moving your hand. So it makes it sound a lot smoother. Um, the other alternative to that is the fixed type of pedal. So if you buy the, the fixed stand for the model of keyboard, um, they normally give you an option of, of, of pedals. I personally don't ever use the other, the, the left and the middle pedal. I only ever use the right pedal, which is the same as this sustain pedal over here um, again that costs a bit more money it could be 80 90 pounds for that um, the advantage of that is is that it doesn't slip away because with these pedals here when you're playing they often sort of if you, as you press it it sort of moves <laughs> so, so you end up with your legs stretched out on the unless you do things like put velcro on the back and different things so for uh, concerts, of course, I use these, uh, uh, I use portable keyboards like these with these portable pedals. For the house, I prefer the uh, the weighted keyboard with the fixed stand and the fixed pedals. So I hope that's been of use. Um, if you have any questions or feedback, please contact me below. Thanks for watching. Bye.